Hello everyone. Here in this lecture, I am going to deal about the female internal genital organs. So previously, I already dealt with the two parts, that is the vagina and the uterus. So the link of these all videos given in the description box below. Please go through with this all videos before you watch this video. And here in this lecture, I am going to cover the another two internal organs, that is the fallopian tube and the ovaries. So the fallopian tube are the paired structure uh, that extends from the lateral border of the uterus. So these are the hollow muscular structure uh, that has two opening. One toward the uterus is the uterine end and the another toward the abdominal cavity is the abdominal ostium. So it is a 10 centimeter long structure. And it lies within the free margin or the free border of broad ligament. So we already discussed that what is the broad ligament. Broad ligament is the double fold of peritoneum. Okay. So suppose if this is the fallopian tube, then the double fold of peritoneum, it forms a sheet like structure that uh, lies over this fallopian tube on either, on either side. Okay. Uh, like a hanging, hanging like structure. Okay. So the tube, so the uterine tube lies within this free margin of broad ligament, within this double fold of peritoneum. Okay. So this fallopian tube is also being called as oviduct, uterine tube or the salphinges. Okay. Salphinx is a singular word and the salphinges is the plural form. Now, uh, it has got four parts. So the most narrowest part and the first part of the tube is the intramural or the interstitial part which has least diameter as it is narrowest. But this part lies within the uterine wall. Okay, so this is the first part that lies within this wall, uterine wall. The another narrower part next to that is the isthmus. But it is quite straight. Okay. This part is straight. And the third which is more wide, more larger and more tortuous uh, that has more bends. Okay. And the part which is responsible for the site of fertilization is the ampulla. Okay. So the third part which is most wide is the ampulla. And the fourth part is infundibulum. Uh, it is uh, also wide and its diameter is also more comparative to other three parts that is 6 mm toward the abdominal opening and uh, in this infundibular part there are 20 to 25 finger like projection which are being attached with this infundibular part. So these finger like projections are called fimbrae and in all of them one is quite longer. And one fimbrae which is quite longer is being attached with the ovaries. This is called the ovarian fimbrae. So uh, what they does, they sweep over the ovary. Whenever the ovulatory period is there, they sweep over the uh, ovaries and allow the ciliary movement and the peristaltic movement uh, by these structure and uh, take take out the secondary oocyte uh, within this tube, okay. So uh, these are the four main part of fallopian tube. Now if we talk about its layer from inner to outer, uh, the innermost lining is the mucosa and this mucosa is made up of ciliated columnar epithelial lining where it has many cilias that allows the movement of mature gamete and uh, the other cells which lie within this mucosa is the pec cell or the secretory cell uh, where they release a certain substances which are responsible for initial nourishment of these gametes. Okay. So the mucosa is mainly made up of ciliated columnar epithelial lining and they also contain some secretory pec cells. Then outer to that mucosa is the muscularis where the two muscle fibers are there. The outer one is arranged in a longitudinal manner and the inner to that one 
is in circular manner. So these muscular fibers, which lies within this muscularis wall, allow the peristaltic movement within this wall, and uh, they help to propel the mature gamete toward the ampullary part. Or even though the fertilized zygote is also uh, moved toward the uterine cavity by these all ciliary movement and the peristaltic movement by this uh, layers, and the outermost lining of the fallopian tube is serosa, uh, which is formed by the visceral peritoneal lining. So this visceral peritoneum forms the serosa lining, that is the outermost covering of the fallopian tube. So these are the layer from inner to outer mucosa, muscularis, and serosa. Now, what is the function of fallopian tube? As I mentioned that. Uh, by the ciliary action of the mucosal lining or the uh, peristaltic movement by the muscular layer, allow the mature gamete to move toward the fertilizing site that is in ampullary part. So, in uh, same manner, the sperms are also moving toward the ampullary part and the secondary oocyte, uh, which is being picked by this fimbrial end of infundibular part, also moves toward or propelled toward the ampullary part. There they meet and they form zygote. So the they allow the ciliary movement and the peristaltic movement, where the mature gamete, the zygote, they move along this tract. Okay, and secondly, it also releases certain substances which are responsible for initial nourishment of these mature gamete as well as for the zygote. So, secretory activity also allow the nourishment for these gametes. So, if we talk about its blood supply, then the medial two-third part of fallopian tube is being supplied by uterine artery and the lateral one-third part is supplied by the ovarian artery and all the deoxygenated blood is being drained into the venous plexuses which is common to ovary as well. So there the plexus which is being formed is the pampaniform plexus. And this receives all the oxygenated blood and this plexus drains into the ovarian vein. So this is the blood supply of the fallopian tube. Now the other part in internal genital organ is the ovaries. So these are the paired sex glands or the gonads in female which are oval in shape or even you can say it is almond in shape and they have the dimension of about 3 into 2 into 1, 3 centimeter long, 2 centimeter wide and 1 centimeter thickness and these ovaries lies within the ovarian fossa uh, in the lateral pelvic wall and these are supported by mainly three ligaments. One is the broad ligament. So there is a posterior, the, the extension of posterior uh, broad ligament is there. So the broad ligament which is extended posteriorly forms mesovarium there. So mesovarium is the posterior extension of broad ligament through which the blood vessels also enter in the ovaries and that supports the ovary but the ovary actually lies within the abdominal cavity. So it is an intra uh, peritoneal organ ovaries and uh, the another ligament is the ovarian ligament. So ovarian ligament uh, extends from the corner of the uterus that is from the lateral aspect of the uterus superior lateral uh, aspect from there the ovarian ligament uh, is being arises and they attaches the ovary and uh, the third ligament is the infundibulo pelvic ligament. So this ligament extends from ovary to the lateral aspect of pelvic wall. So the main function of the ovary is to store and uh, mature the follicles and it will also release uh, the oocyte as well. Okay. So it is the site for maturation and for storage of the various follicle and through these all follicles certain steroids hormones are also being produced uh, in the later developmental state 
where uh, it releases estrogen and progesterone by these all follicles so steroidogenesis is also the another function by these all ovaries uh, the paired ovaries so steroidogenesis then the storage and maturation of follicles are the main function of these ovaries so what is the structure of ovary so uh, overall this ovary is divided into two part the outer peripheral part is uh, called the ovarian cortex and the middle part is the medulla so outer cortex part is lined by a single cube like epithelial layer which is being called as germinal epithelium and deep to that is the white fibrous layer which formed by connective tissue is the tunica albuginea tunica means layer albuginea means whitish layer and deep to that are the various follicles uh, which they underwent into various uh, developmental processes and they change from primordial follicle to primary then secondary then to tertiary follicle and then converted into mature graphene follicle and finally on day ovulation the secondary oocyte released from this mature graphene follicle and the remnant follicle forms corpus luteum and this corpus luteum releases certain hormones but once its life span uh, ends then it become degenerative and forms corpus albicans so there are various developmental stages of the follicle and this all uh happens in the cortex part of the ovary okay inner to cortex is the medullary part and in this medullary part various blood vessels nerves as well as some lymphatic drainage the uh, muscles the muscle layer as well as some loose connective tissues or the some hyalus cells are also present in this medullary part so the opening the hilum the part through which the blood vessels enter uh, is the hilus part and this is being attached with the mesovarium mesovarium is the posterior extension of broad ligament through which these blood vessels enter okay so this is the structure outer is cortex and inner one is medulla and next is the blood supply so the arterial supply is mainly through ovarian artery and uh, this is the branch of abdominal aorta and all the deoxygenated blood is drained uh, into the plexuses so the plexuses which surround this ovary is called pampiniform plexus and this drains into the ovarian vein so here in this lecture we have covered with the rest of the two internal organs that is fallopian tube and the ovaries thank you